Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're at the Excellent Story Group Channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are going over some of the readings of Messiah, Yahushua, and we are deep into this segment here. We are the people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are good for all time. They are what everybody should be embracing in their lives if they want to find that kingdom road. And um, I have two injured people right next to me. I have one guy who... Uh, can't move at all. And then I got another guy who got gored by a bull yesterday on his birthday. Eli, you have bruises all over your body. You you look a little bit beat up. How do you feel, buddy? Uh, really sore. Okay, come come tell us about the story of the bull. So what happened? Um, we, there's some bulls or some cows that I think are in heat somewhere else. And uh, somehow Mr. Ed, our family cow, uh, he's no longer the family cow. He's about to be hung up in the tree cow. He's about to become the family hamburger cow. If he does this again, what happened? So basically we had two cows that ran away, we, we uh, found them, got them back, so we had to go find the rest of the cows, make sure they hadn't ran away. I found Mr. Ed, he was under one of our trees, and um, so he did not want to go back because he, he, because there was probably a cow in heat, he did not want to go back, every time I'd try and get him to turn around, he'd go right back to the same spot. Then, uh, then I was trying to push him back, I had a stick, he did not want to turn around, I was like hitting him in his shoulder trying to get him to turn around, he walks back a little bit, and all of a sudden he lets out like a little moo, and then he like dashes forward, I try and dash back. He uh, runs forward and then gores me, uh, pushes me to the ground, starts dragging me across the ground, and then he pins me to the ground with his horns. He's like on his knees, on the front legs. He, I finally get him up. I get up. Then he pushes me to the ground again. I finally get up and I uh, get away from him. Yeah, so that was on Eli's birthday. We don't really celebrate birthdays around here um, exactly, but that was one way you don't want to celebrate a birthday. He comes walking back in, and his pants are half off. They're completely ripped. It looks like he's just been drugged through a knot hole. And um, it was very, it was a very curious situation. Now he's all banged up and bruised up. Um, crazy days, huh? Life is but a vapor. Any one of us could die. Uh, very easily, you could have died yesterday um, with a cow that has gone crazy. And any one of us at any point, this can be the very last day that we could be alive. This could be the very last day that you guys can choose our creator. This is the day that you can choose the creator and his son. And it's a two-way combo. And you're not going to get away with this choosing one without the other. It, it, we must have a Melchizedek priest. We must have the lamb sacrifice. And we must have the Torah. It, it's, it takes two of these things to make this happen. So uh, just uh, adventures in Boss Clan. Glad you're all right. And then Cade's jacked up as well. Um, but that's just from desk jockey jobs. Okay, here we go. Chapter 15. Taking only the twelve apostles and a few women, who were also followers, Yahushua set out for Caesarea Philippi, a city renamed by Tetrarch Philip, when seeking Roman patronage. On one eventide, while on the way, Yahushua said to the twelve, Who do the people in the places we pass the, through think I am? They were not agreed, some saying the people believed him to be the liver and some the enlightener. Others said the people believed him to be the Mashiach, Mashiach whilst some said that many thought he was Yochanan of the wilderness, for sometimes it seemed his Ruach had entered Yahushua. Yahushua said, Who do you think I am? Again, they were not agreed. And Yahushua said, I am he whom all men need. Whomever, the, whomever they seek, call a thing by a hundred names, and it remains the same. However, each of you keep your own conception in your heart and discuss it with no one. Later at a house at Belos, they were discussing the people's expectations for the Mashiach. And Yahuda said to Yahushua, If you are truly he, then the people will believe and follow you. For the prophecies in the holy books must be fulfilled. He will surely come. And I believe you are he. I believe the reborn world is at hand and the day of the people's salvation is near. All right, is this the same Judas that... I think so. ...that gave him the kiss I of death? I think so, yeah. Okay, so um, interesting so far. Anyone have anything? I got nothing so far on that. Um, he's basically, we've heard the story before, but we didn't know they were on a boat or wherever they were at, or he wouldn't know. Like, what he's saying, he's like, who do the people say I am? We didn't know that the people, the towns he was going through, like, they, like, people were saying who he was. Yeah. And then uh, here, we've really never heard like this before. Yeah. Six. Yochanan said, it is foreordained that the Mashiach will suffer death by violence, but will rise triumphant above it to manifest again as proof that death is not the destined end. Yahushua said, Perhaps I am the Mashiach, for will he not be all things to all men? Kepha said, Master, we are your friends, and you are our guiding light, the hope of our lives. 
Do not say such things, for we cannot bear to lose you. Yahushua answered, I must bear the cross of life, and on me it lies more heavily than on others. Each must do whatever he may be called upon to do, and great causes demand great deeds and sacrifices. Then he said to Kepha, Do not be so blinded by worldliness that you cannot believe the Ruach can rise above the claims of the flesh. If you are, then it will be better for you to come no further. Okay, this is, um, this is interesting, right? This is, uh... Yeah, so Peter doesn't want to lose his friend. They're really close to this point. They're really good friends. He's like, hey, don't, you don't need to do this. Maybe just let someone else do it. And, uh, Kepha, and then he's like, uh, he's like, I gotta do this. I gotta make this sacrifice. I got to, I got to be the one to do this. You know, great, great causes, great responsibilities. You have to do this great sacrifices. And, uh, and Peter's like, and then he's like, Peter, don't be blinded by worldly things or worldly wants. Uh, if you are, then you should probably leave. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hardcore, right? It's uh, the Ruach rises above the claims of the flesh. The claims of the flesh in this case would be what? Uh, him. Death. Yeah. Claims of the flesh is death. That's what we're talking about. And so that is, um, he, he's trying to get him to understand that, uh, don't worry about the, the death claim, right? He, he's going to be dead. That's the way it is. But, but there's a resurrection coming. Okay, 11. To the others, he said, do not view these things as men do, but see them through the eyes of Yahuwah. Coming to a village, Yahushua ate while a small crowd gathered, and there he addressed the people, saying, If any of you intend to be followers of mine, you must put aside any thoughts of self and carry your own burden of suffering without complaint. If a man worries too much about his own safety and comfort, he gains nothing. But if he sacrifices for the sake of my cause, he will not lose. What profit can a man make by gaining all the world has to offer in exchange for the welfare of his own soul? What can he take from his gains to buy back? What has been lost? We've heard that before. We've heard that. You know, said, nothing is really so right. People will sell their soul for riches and fame, and it's not worth it because you end up in, in Sheol. You end up in a place of darkness when you sell your soul for this earthly life. Yeah. Yep. Okay, 13. Therefore, take care, for I give warning. If anyone in this adulterous and depraved generation choose to ignore my teachings, that person may find himself ignored when seeking entry into the state of glory. I can also tell you that some are here who will realize the nature of heaven before undergoing the experience of death. This part reminded me of when he was saying that not all of you will experience death or something. Remember that right. little saying yeah. in, in the scriptures? We didn't know exactly what he was talking about in that, um, other than um, he, that they would see the kingdom of Elohim before they died. He said something of that nature. <coughs> Excuse me. Essentially, he said, um, there are some standing here who will see the reign of Elohim before they see death. And um, we all have always thought, you know, well, you know, they, they saw Messiah die and they also saw the resurrection, which is the beginning of the kingdom, which is probably what he meant. Um, but he also says something a little differently here. He says, I can also tell you that some are here who will realize the nature of heaven before undergoing the experience of death. And that's, I think that's what we need to do is we need to realize the nature of heaven so that we can change our lives to conform to what the, the Torah wants us to be. 14, someone there said, adultery is kept in check by stoning. How can the punishment be increased to prevent it? Yahushua said, if a tree is cut down, it will spring up in many places. From the root, evil is overcome by digging out the root of evil. Adultery has many causes, but if a man marries a woman who has fornicated, can he revile her for sorrow he has brought upon his own head? The dowry of a chast woman is so much higher. But if a man accepts what she brings and revile her for what she has not, surely he is mean-hearted. Okay, anyone want to take a stab at that? I sat there and I, I think I so get it. So basically say if he marries someone who is like a fornicator. Or has been, she's not a, she's not a virgin. Right, right? and uh, he marries her. He basically can't judge her for that. He can't be upset with her for that because he chose to marry her. Yeah, that is that took me a little bit. I, I think you figured that out faster than I was able to figure that out. Um, and it, it says the dowry of a chaste woman. Um, much woman is higher, right? Because you're you're giving a bride price because she's undefiled. But if you are the if you marry a woman and you have chosen to marry a woman and she wasn't a virgin, you. If you're sitting there um, messing with her because of that act and you chose to marry her, that's your gig, right? And if you do that, right here, Messiah says you're mean-hearted. So if you're judging your woman based upon things of the past, 
Um, that's wrong. That's completely wrong. Sixteen. Yeah, go for everyone. If you're judging people for things of the past, like for like things like that, for things that maybe that was out, they couldn't control it was out of their hand. You're a mean-hearted person. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, a lot of that would go. There's there's tons and tons of different situations like that where we will take people to the, of the past and we will you know um, the past is the past. And Messiah says it in this as well that um, we gotta we gotta move on. Okay, sixteen. Before any man casts a stone at an adulteress, let him search his heart and see whether he be guiltless before women. I say to those men who have one rule for their wives and another for the wives of others, set one standard and abide by it. Otherwise, be branded as hypocrites. Okay. Um, so he's like you. You do one thing. You do certain things with your wife, but you like judge everyone else for doing other things. Yeah, you're you're judging so others. You have a, have one set of rules. One set of rules, and what is our set of rules? It the should to- be the Torah. Torah. It should absolutely be the Torah. Seventeen. Men too readily lay blame at the doors of others, for surely if anyone puts his hand into a snake hole, he can hardly blame the snake for being bitten. If a man enters the house of harlotry, who is to blame if he collects the whore's dowry? Um, this one took a second and I think I figured it out. Um, anybody want to take a stab at that one? Basically your fault here for going there. I think when he's saying that the whore's dowry, I think he's talking about if you marry a whore, um, you're the one that went into a whorehouse and you're the one that did it. You're the one that put your hand in a snake hole. Um, you, you, if the snake bites you, that you're the one that put your hand there. So really, don't put yourselves in like those kind of situations. Yeah. Kind of situation that is against the Lord, don't put yourself into it, or you will get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, and unless you're like Hosea, who uh, needed to go out there, wasn't it Hosea? Yeah, he had to go yeah. Visit, visit, marry the harlot. Um, there would be no reason to enter a something like that, right? That, and he he puts it to the same as like a snake hole, right? And you you want to go into a whorehouse, that's a snake hole. Don't don't do it. Eighteen. Yahushua was invited into a house to eat and rest, and having done so, he sat outside in the courtyard, amusing the children who played there. He told them stories which were seeds planted in their hearts. Some women were also listening, and when two of the twelve came into the courtyard and told the women to see the children, did not bother Yahushua. He overheard them and said, Let the children come to me, for from such as these will come the rule of Elohim. Okay, we've heard that before, yeah, right? We didn't know that uh, they were, the host was playing with them, right? He's playing with the kids, like tossing ball with them or something. Yeah. And uh, the women are sitting there just watching and they're watching Yehoshua teach the kids while he's playing with them. And the dad was like, leave him alone, he's busy. Wouldn't that be amazing to be um, the kid there who was, uh, thinking that, um, who was uh, played, played with, yeah, had Messiah. Messiah, you know, what games would Yeah, and it shows more of Messiah, right? He's not all that, like, super serious, like, super guy, like, just going straight to the point, right? He's uh, He takes time off to... Play with people. Play yeah, with kids. play with the kids. Yeah, very important stuff. 20. Yahushua said to those present, I am sure if any of you found an ox or a donkey fallen into a well on the Shabbat, you would have no hesitation in rescuing it. None disputed with him. Seeing how those present scrambled for the best seats, Yahushua said, When invited to a feast, do not rush for the best seats, because the host may have special guests in mind to occupy them. So if you have grabbed one of those seats... These seats, he will come and request you to vacate it in favor of another, and you will then have to take a seat not wanted by anyone else. When invited as a guest, it is wiser to take one of the less desirable places. Then your host will come and escort you to a better seat. Thus, the other guests will see what the host holds, see that the host holds you in high regard. It is a, import, it is a rule of life that whoever makes himself out to be more important than he is will be humiliated, while he who is modest will be exalted. Wow. If, you're, if you're a wedding, you're basically supposed to start sitting in the back, right? And then the guy will be like, hey, man, I want you to be up front watching my wedding. Yeah, and, you know, this is something that, you know, a lot of people will fall into is self-greatness, right? A lot of people, oh, look, look at my house. Look at my car. Look at my my job. Look at my money. Look at my uh, lawn. Look at my beautiful lawn. I spend all this money here. And, you know, it's, it's all about this. And um, it is very, very clear that... Those kind of people don't make the the shamayim, and if they do make it, I, I you know it's it's going to be under different. Um, they, they're going to be different people, right? They're not going to be those kind of people that are, are self self made people that are just better than everybody else. And so we got to bring ourselves down. We we got to put ourselves down on this. Okay, last verse for the day. Yahushua said, "Most of you here give formal feasts, and all your 
all have more food and goods, things of life than they need. Yet because your stomachs never have been empty, you cannot understand the sufferings of the underprivileged. But if adversity descend upon you, the cry goes up, woe is me. Can there be an Elohim when I am thus afflicted? Do you not understand that misfortune and tribulation must be sent to such as you? For in what other way will you learn compassion? So basically you're saying you have to uh, be in someone, you have to understand what someone's going through to have compassion on them. Because if you've never been hungry and someone's hungry, you're going to look at them like, oh, okay, you don't really care because you don't know what it's like to be hungry. But if you've been hungry before and that person's asking for food because ah, I'm hungry, can you have some food? you can be like, oh, of course you have food. I've been hungry. I know what it feels like to be hungry. Here, have some food. Yeah, and compassion, it's hard to have compassion sometimes. It is really hard. A lot of people will look at the people on the street and they'll just go, wow, those guys are into drugs. They, they are on the streets because they've obviously made mistakes, right? But sometimes we end up in the streets and sometimes we don't make those mistakes. Sometimes we're not buying drugs and we end up on the streets. Sometimes we lose our jobs. Sometimes we lose everything we have. Sometimes we uh, have a house for, uh, vacated and, and for taken back, you know. There's millions of different reasons why people end up in the streets. And the number one thing is nobody ever got up any day ever in their life and goes, man, I really wish I end up in the streets. Man, I really wish I would move my home to the gutter. I really wish I could find a cardboard box and I could, you know, just move. That's my wish. That's my dreams. That's my desires, right? That does not happen. And so we must have compassion on everybody that is broken, everybody that has been humbled, everybody that is lesser than 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 the life that they should have. If, if they are lesser than the life they have and you have an opportunity to bring them up in this life, then grab them and hold them and love them and show them love, show them compassion, show them the road to the kingdom, show them all of this because without this, we're not gonna make the kingdom. Without compassion, without love, without any of this, the kingdom is built up like children. Messiah just told us that the kingdom is made up like those children. And unless we have hearts and minds and souls as children and good children, not bad children, but we're not gonna make the Shabbat. So. It's, uh, anyone have anything else out there? Uh, read your Bibles, have compassion, don't walk by that person without helping them. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. We love you. All have right. a wonderful day. So long. So long.